in this video, we're going to be talking about combo boxes and um, how that compares to a drop down list in Power Apps. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a background of what it is, how you would typically use it, and, uh, and a couple of use cases. Um, so, uh, our, our first discussion, we're going to talk about obviously what it is, um, how data is pulled into it, uh, how do we get data out of it, and uh, how do these things all work together. So um, let's uh, hop into Power Apps, and uh, pretty much I started with a um, a blank app. So we're gonna go through all of this together, and uh, you'll see exactly how this works. Um, on our uh, on our first screen, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a combo box, so you can see what this looks like. And it's basically just looking like a drop down. You know, you would you would say it's a drop down menu uh, if you didn't know the difference. Um, so I'm going to actually insert a drop down as well next to it so you can see the difference. So, so if they were side by side, you really wouldn't know the difference between each other. Let's make them the same size. You really wouldn't see the difference between these two. Um, the main difference between uh, a combo box and a drop down box is that you are able to search items uh, and you are also able to select multiple items. So, um, so that can help you out in a couple ways. So let's go ahead and hook up a data source to, uh, to this um, combo box. Uh, I'm going to be, use the, uh, be using the contacts entity. Um, and uh, we will go ahead and take a look at that. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the contact entity. What I'll be focusing on is the lookup field owning user, which uh, is related to the user field. Uh, I want to return a list of all of the current users who have access to my CRM and, um, and be able to select those. So um, let's hop back over. Um, so contacts. So you, you'll see um, if I were to just go ahead and say the items uh, were contacts owning user. Uh, you would see that no data is provided, all right? There's a reason for that, because it doesn't work like that. You need to actually pass in a record, right? So how we do that is by using the choices function. So we're going to say choices, uh, the, and it's giving us a hint here, what is the column? Uh, and we're going to say our contacts entity is a column. And we want to identify the owning user, right? So now, if we take a look, it returns a list of all of our users. So that can kind of get that can kind of kind of be a gotcha there, just so you can uh, understand that you do need to use the choices function for that. Uh, so let's hop on over and let's compare that to what a drop down menu looks like. So if you were to look at it, you would say, okay, yeah, looks similar, but I'm not actually able to search or or uh, select multiple items. Whereas here, um, I would be able to select multiple items. So that's just a, uh, um, a quick difference there for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and we're going to focus mainly on our combo box for now. So we're gonna go ahead and delete these uh, items that were selected. All right, so now, um, what I want to do is I would like to pass information from another screen and already pre-select an item in my combo box. So how would I do that? Uh, let's go ahead and add a screen. And I'm going to say, I don't need to name it. I'm going to go ahead and add a button. And we're going to say that this button is a selecting screen, it's on a welcome screen, and on selecting this button, it forwards you to another screen and it pre-selects items in this combo box. So we're gonna say, on select, we're going to navigate to screen one, screen one, one. <laughs> I should really name these better, but. There's <sighs> a none. Okay, and so as a third step, I'm going to create a contextual variable and I'm going to say, this is called username. 
and basically I'm going to pass in the logged in user. So basically what I want to say is uh, I am logged in and I will select myself from the list of logged in users. So this could also be a security feature if you don't want this particular person um, selecting any other users and, and manipulating any records for that user. So um, that could be also a use case for this. So user full name. And all right, so when we click this button, it's going to navigate us to this screen, but it's not doing anything yet, right? So basically if we come on over here and we look in, if we view our variables, we see that we do have a variable, it's called username, and it is assigned the uh, text of the user, of the current user, uh, logged in user, which is me, of course. All right, so it's doing what we wanted to do. So now let's focus on the combo box and, uh, and have it select this as a, uh, as a default item. So let's go into uh, advanced. And what we want to do is we want to go into the default selected items. Oh, it's up here. Okay. So you see under default selected items, there's nothing there. Uh, and basically what this does is uh, it's the initial selected item before the user interacts with it. All right. So we want my name or the, or the current logged in user's name to, uh, to appear without having to actually select anything. Okay. So that's our, uh, that's our goal. So basically what we want to do is we want to use the search function, right? So we want to search through the choices of contacts. Excuse me. Right? We want to search the contacts uh, owning user. And now we want to search for the text. Well, the text we have already passed over into the screen as a contextual variable. And that is actually username. It would help if I could spell username. Uh, so that's the text we are searching for. And now we are look, we want to say, okay, in what column do you want to, uh, do you want to look for that? So we're going to select full name. Okay. So that should do the trick. And we see that my user has already been selected by default. So if we hop back, And we, uh, we click this button, we see that my name is selected by default. Again, um, a use case of this could be if you want to return a list of users and without scrolling down all these users and, and, and choosing one, uh, having a, a user show up as default. So that was it. That was a quick video I wanted to show you guys on how to use this. Uh, if you guys have any questions, as usual, go ahead and reach out to me. Um, here's my web address and uh, contact information, and uh, I hope this helps. Have a good day.